So why do we do nonlinear dynamic systems and control is because uh, very, very important. Most systems that we see around us are nonlinear. And if you're doing, uh, if you want to study stability, if you want to understand their behavior, their evolution asymptotically uh, or, or the transient behavior, you need to understand how to analyze these systems. So that's sort of the first uh, relatively big half. Yeah, we learn techniques. Uh, so everything we do in this course is deterministic. We are not doing anything stochastic here. So it's a deterministic course. And uh, we of course want to introduce a little bit of design. So we, uh, especially in the second half of the semester, you will see uh, more and more of doing design. Methods of doing design and then examples of doing design. Yeah. So that by the end of this course, if you have, you know, some example system. Yeah. For example, if you have a robotic system, if you have an electrical system, anything, yeah, and you have a fairly, you know, uh, good fidelity model for this, then you can actually use some of the methods that you've learned here in order to uh, do a control design. All right. Mostly, of course, this is a very fundamental course for, uh, you know, control theory practitioners, uh, control theorists and control theory practitioners, um, uh, industry folks. So, of course, um, a lot of Syscon students, uh, show up here because it's a core course yeah uh, but it is also of a um, lot of interest for anybody who's working in the general area of dynamical system so i get a lot of students from uh, aerospace mechanical uh, i myself from an aerospace background so a lot of what i do is uh, you know apply these theories to aerospace systems you know things like satellites attitude control you know uh, spacecraft on orbits um, um, I, I mean, my own background is that I uh, did my aerospace engineering PhD from the University of Texas at Austin. So it's one of the nicer programs uh, in aerospace in the US, I would say. And uh, Texas was also a very good place to be. Um, and um, we had a lot of exposure to um, not just doing a lot of theory, but we also got to interact with, uh, you know, folks from NASA, Air Force Research Labs who were sort of coming in with their own projects you know, and their own research, which was sort of very real problems. Yeah. And, um, you know, so, so it would typically work like it works here. The faculty has a project and you typically get put on the project as a PhD student and uh, then you sort of contribute bits and pieces to it. Yeah, of course, you are not just running the whole thing, but uh, we did a little bit of satellite control design uh, for a few of these agencies. Okay, um, so a lot of lot of applications in recent times. Of course, uh, I have seen applications in uh, I've seen people work on applications in uh, smart grid control. Yeah, I mean, uh, in Germany, Siemens uh, actively sponsors these projects with the smart grid control because in Europe, a lot of this. Uh, I believe this, um, you know, uh, energy generation locally uh, is very, very uh, highly encouraged. So a lot of, uh, you know, uh, local folks do energy generation and then they supply to the grid. But then the problem with these is that everybody is generating uh, at their own pace, at their own frequency. So the parameters and everything is off, right? So you can't just join things to a grid and expect a uniform frequency. So here you have you know, applications for nonlinear systems uh, in terms of synchronization. So it's like a multi uh, system, multi agent, uh, cooperative system sort of a problem where you are, uh, you know, you're talking about how to synchronize the frequencies, you know, how to fre synchronize some of the power outputs. Yeah. So that uh, when you join one thing into the grid, you know, the grid doesn't start to fail and things like that. So, uh, a lot of applications. Now, of course, there are folks who are doing uh, biological systems, biological kind of applications, reaction rate. Uh, during this COVID pandemic, there were a lot of models. Again, uh, I'm not sure how successful those were. But there are applications now, more modern applications to, uh, you know, reaction rate models, which is sort of the uh, infectious disease spreading models. Then there is, uh, please come forward. Uh, uh, then there is, 
lot of applications to uh, you know uh, more recently uh, social systems yeah for example if you're talking about advertising and marketing all right um, there is a lot of applications there where uh, a, a particular marketer wants to know uh, which agents to influence for example there may be i mean a lot of you are on social plat social media platforms right like instagram so you see that there are a few people who have you know millions of followers so these folks are influencers so if they say that you know buy this toothpaste your teeth will be perfect forever then people believe them so it's like so so uh, typically these uh, advertising agencies and these marketing managers they now want model based uh, decisions right on on who to target which particular uh, you know which particular uh, influencer to target or which particular uh, you know social agent to target so that uh, their campaign you know goes forward you know much more efficiently so here also there is you know applications of nonlinear dynamical systems and control. Yeah, nonlinear dynamical systems to look at the evolution. Right, once I introduce an opinion in one corner of the graph of a very very huge network of social graph, uh, there is you know what's the outcome? You know, asymptotically after a long time, you want to see how many uh, new people got influenced to buy this toothpaste, and uh, the other end of the spectrum is how to influence, where to introduce the new opinion. Yeah. So, so things like these, all right. So, let's see. Uh, the syllabus is from, as you can see, 2021. Uh, I will fix it and then upload it to the Moodle platform. Uh, don't worry about it. So, the structure is pretty standard. What we have here, it's, it's just lecture and credit. We don't have tutorial and practice included here. Anyway, we may have extra sessions, you know, with the TAs depending on how, you know, we think we are progressing. If you want to learn more, if you want to sort of you know you have trouble understanding some particular bit of material then we'll have some sessions but they are not officially included here okay uh, this is also wrong yeah like i said 2021 i'm going to fix all this you know the sections are wednesday friday 11 to 12 30 right here okay so this is what is going to be office hours i'll actually put uh, a formal set of office hours yeah uh, not by appointment so this is also something i will sort of introduce yeah there will be a formal office hours uh, during the week and uh, so that if any of you have doubts you can just walk in during that time i will be available during that time so you can walk in and ask your doubts no need for an appointment yeah if you want of course separately to talk to me then of course you will need an appointment all right uh ta's also i will make this change soon yeah we will just have metre and pallavi as ta's not subhito all right um this is one of the key things i sort of expect although i know we have newly joined students who probably don't exactly have this background uh, but we we sort of stretch this okay so the general expectant uh, expectation is that there is a graduate level competence in ordinary differential equations so you must have seen some kind of a state space ode course okay so that uh, you know even the models shouldn't look like you know unfamiliar and foreign to you all right so because that's what we work with we start with models yeah okay uh, so if you're unsure of our academic preparation please talk to me after the class yeah this is the first class so usually a lot of people show up and anyway so uh, please talk to me after the class if you have um, so i expect some basic matlab or python or some alternate programming experience because see i do some bit of design aspect also in the second half so there uh, i can assure you if you unless you do some bit of uh, you know hands on coding and things like that at least you don't get a good feel for you know whether what you did worked well or not okay so uh, so i expect some basic matlab or some programming uh, experience yeah all right Again, if you are unsure, please talk to me. And if a lot of you are not on the same page with terms of programming, then of course we may have to chuck it. But I prefer not to. Yeah, you will also enjoy it. a little bit of a programming exposure. All right, you see some real systems and them working under the controllers you designed. Yeah, and then you learn also things like things that we don't talk about is like how to tune the gains in nonlinear control. I mean, it's still a little bit ad hoc. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Uh, the topics. 
this is the uh, very very uh, broad overview of the topics okay uh, we may choose not to do some of them depending on how much time we have yeah but this is a generally broad overview more or less you can assume that we will cover at least 90 percent or more of this material okay so it, it's not going to change significantly like i said this is a very fundamental course so unfortunately i don't have a lot of freedom in uh, you know talking about a lot of new areas okay so if we do have time of course we will but usually it will be a fundamental course so the methods uh, that we talk about are by now classical okay not classical in the sense of 1800s but classical in the sense that everybody knows this uh, in the community yeah we just learn it better here okay so first we start with some nonlinear systems introduction example some preliminaries yeah which all of you will require which will sort of set up uh, notation okay for how uh, things will look how the mathematical notation will look all right then we will have we we'll start immediately with the lyapunov stability okay so this is the fundamental stability notion for nonlinear systems like for linear system well again these notions are also pretty much valid for linear systems okay uh, so there's no real difference as such the only thing is that linear systems you are used to working with input output stability yeah so you hardly talk about uh, there is notions of internal stability right and there you pretty much characterize it with what do you characterize it with by the way how do you characterize internal stability for linear systems eigenvalues yeah just write the matrix x dot is ax and just check the eigenvalues of the system if they are on the negative left half plane or whatever i mean if they are on the the real parts are negative you are good to go okay so so this is how you evaluate um, but that's a evaluation method yeah that's not a definition all right it's an evaluation method and not a definition so let's be very clear definition still remain the same okay um, so you you see a lot more evaluation methods when you talk about linear systems you hardly look at the definition most of you when you, if you did linear systems you would not have seen definitions you would have seen tests like you know check if the poles are on the left half plane and things like that you would not have talked about what exactly is stability okay so lyapunov stability definitions are the universal standard for what is stability okay how do we characterize what exactly is the notion that we are talking about so things immediately get mathematical here yeah so welcome to the course very quickly all right uh, then of course we talk about lyapunov theorems yeah these are the tests for nonlinear systems okay in nonlinear systems we, notions of eigen values and all that no questions about it because you cannot write it as a matrix a constant matrix okay and so if you even uh, even if you have a linear time varying system i hope all of you understand that just checking the eigen values of a linear time varying system does not tell you anything about stability yeah even if for all time the time varying matrix that you have has negative eigen values negative real eigen values it doesn't guarantee stability okay this is a well known fact yeah so for time varying linear systems also these eigen values test do not work uh, you know the way you expect them to okay so there is no question of them working for non linear systems yeah i mean obviously not of course there is possibility of doing linearizations and things like that we do not talk about linearizations here okay we directly test stability of non linear systems via lyapunov theorems okay that's the idea all right then we talk about invariance theorems which are uh, uh, give a little bit more flexibility in terms of um, sort of an extension for our lyapunov theorems uh, then uh, we'll talk about input output stability this is sort of the linear system equivalent yeah uh, also has its advantages in nonlinear systems in modern nonlinear systems there is notion of uh, notions of uh, input to state stability yeah so iss results and input output stability these are important when you are talking about uh, disturbances okay so any real system is affected by disturbances yeah whatever i do in theory you cannot expect that you know the real system is going to have a very similar uh, sort of an outcome you know you may apply the same control yeah you design a control for a quadcopter and you put it on a quadcopter it will not behave 
how you think it is expected to. Yeah, these are all effects of disturbances. Okay, of course there is no there is actuator saturation and so many other things, but all of these can be clubbed as disturbances if you want. To. Okay, so input output stability is an important notion. It sort of connects linear system notions. Yeah, then uh, the design part. Yeah, which I'm hoping a lot of you will be excited about. Yeah, so. The first is Lyapunov redesign, where we use the notions of Lyapunov functions to uh, design controllers. We learn how to do that. Okay. Then we have one of the most most powerful techniques of uh, designing Lyapunov functions. So once you design a Lyapunov function, of course you can use Lyapunov redesign to get a controller, right? Uh, so this is called backstepping design. So it's like a, it's a step by step way of coming up with a Lyapunov function. So it's a rather powerful method. Uh, I talk about it even in my adaptive control course because backstepping is the sort of central idea for designing controllers there. Then we have feedback linearization which is one of the oldest ways of uh, designing nonlinear controllers. Um, and then finally we have passivity and energy shaping which I have clearly said is subject to time availability. Okay? So um, again depending on how I feel I may add some more. Uh, design elements yeah the the uh, fundamental analysis elements are standard there's no change all of you have to learn this if you have to even talk about design and talk about nonlinear system stability and so on yeah so this there will be hardly any change in this uh, first section but in the design part we can choose to do a little bit more here and there depending on uh, what our interests are and what is the time that we have okay so these are the references very standard okay khalil's book by nonlinear systems for the invariance design very very good book very good reference for that vidya sagar's book is one of the most mathematically precise uh, nonlinear systems analysis book yeah then all the geometric notions uh, feedback linearization uh, all of these are best explained in alberto isidori's book yeah very good book again and then you have this Christic, the KKK book. So it's the Christic, Kanalakopoulos, and Kokotovich book for nonlinear adaptive control. Since it's so difficult to say, I just call it the KKK book. So usually I will tell you which book I'm somehow referring material from. But of course, as you will see, I have, I have handwritten notes and things like that. So, uh, so maybe in the future it will become printed notes. But right now it's handwritten notes. So uh, mostly we will have. Uh, this sort of uh, these are the sort of key references here okay uh, very good books all of them very good books I mean over time if you want to be in this area of nonlinear control I think you should own all these books yeah over time I'm not saying you have to buy it now but I'm saying these are really really good books to have as references for life yeah good